Hi, welcome to part two of the LTS podcast. Remember, these podcasts are posted, the audio version at least, are posted every Tuesday of the week, unless otherwise told. And there's a video per- portion of this podcast that is on YouTube. So if you'd like to follow that one, follow the links in the description. So see you then. Marcos out. Hey, this is Life, Tech, and Sundry. Join Alan, Marcos, and Josue, the hosts of LTS. Follow us at LT Sundry on Twitter, LTS.pod on Instagram, Life, Tech, and Sundry on YouTube, and all your favorite podcast distribution services. Stay frosty. All right, so I want to I wanna give uh, one of mine out, but I'm not sure what it's called. Maybe you can help me, Kanichi. So, um, typically, I I want to say that in Japanese homes, uh, you have like um, you have fish, right? Whether it be salmon or some other type of fish that you eat for like breakfast, maybe. Yes. Yes. Um. So, typically, us. Um, uh, I I want I don't want to speak for all Mexicans, but I probably for my family, <laughs> for okay. Marcos and Josue and myself, like we'll have like fish Pandas. for <laughs> fish for <laughs> for lunch and dinner, not usually breakfast. Okay, but what we usually do is that we'll have like a mojarra or something like that, so like a deep fried fish. Okay, and um, I think. For breakfast in Japan, it's usually more like a broiled type of fish, if I'm not mistaken. Broiled type? No, I think usually baked type. You can show a picture. No, show not a not boiled, broiled, broiled. So it's where the heat hits it from the top. Oh yeah, it's no, like yeah, a little oh, yeah. oven. Yes, yes, you're right. Yes, it, it, it's an oven, but it's like it gets broiled from the top. Okay. Or you can or you can bake it, like you were saying. Or you um, just play on a mixtape on it. <laughs> that's very hot um then usually us what we what we would do is add uh sauce lime, lime sauce or lime juice i'm sorry and then hot sauce on it oh okay and so lime and chile okay usually Ooh, is the, oh, that seems to be go-to. nice <laughs> okay For it's fish. our bread and butter with with rice and that that would probably like, oh, okay. and and some veggies. So oh, that might be right. one. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that might be one. Um, usually, like for me, I, I like salmon, so I I usually do the lime mm-hmm. juice and then the Valentina hot sauce on it. Okay, okay. And then with rice and my my salad or and rice on the side. Oh, I, I would um, try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the other one I was telling you uh, while Marcos was gonna go is the cocoa curry. <laughs> I remember Edgar and I went to go get cocoa curry and Edgar I think asked for the one that was spicy and I asked for the mild. Edgar thought it was good but he thought that the spiciness was maybe a li- almost a little too much for him but um but it was, was good. He no, no, thankfully he uh, it was probably at the, towards the end that he started sweating but it was good. It was just like obviously they ask you how many grams of of uh, chicken that you would like, right? When you go yes. to like a curry, so you, I, you only I, answer yes. I I asked for the most, so I'm like, uh, I don't even know what the hell I said. I probably, I looked at the Not menu and at, at the menu and I went like this. I want this one. <laughs> it's like I want this one and I, uh, obviously the curry mild and a good amount of rice. And you know how they sit you down. You have like the nice little pitchers of, of tea. I think it's like barley tea or something like that. And then um, I think you have your, like your little condiments right there. Um, and, and, bro, I'm telling you, delicious. I don't know what it was. Maybe I was just super hungry after walking for miles over there in Japan. Kilometers. But, uh, kilometers, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and then getting there and actually ordering it and getting your nice big plate of curry with uh, the katsu. Uh, yeah, no, with that <laughs> sauce. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it was really good. Really good. So I don't know if, you, if you're if you into um, like places like Kogo curry or something like that. Or is curry not your, your favorite dish, I guess? Or a dish you like? Uh, I think uh, actually just... Uh, uh, I remember 
you can get、uh, that kind of curry in Mitsuwa. Right, yeah, right, 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 right.、Um, so, anyway,、uh, I think,、uh, yes, I like Coco curry and I, I ate that Coco curry in、uh, supper one time. Oh. <laughs> and,、um, and also,、uh, Actually, as you know, there are many ramen shops in Japan, so every week I go to there. <laughs> yes. So, is the, ramen, is the ramen shops in Sapporo like the hamburger shops or the yes, coffee shops? Exactly, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes.、Oh. And I like the tip,、uh, some, one kind of ramen. It's called、uh, Yokohama ramen.、Oh. I found、uh, one Yokohama ramen shop in、uh, New York City. I forget、uh, the name of the shop, but I'm sure you can taste,、uh, you can,、uh, yes, you can find difference between normal ramen and your common ramen.、Mm. So if you have a chance, I hope you can go to there. I, I can't remember.、Uh, I can't remember. So, what Kenichi's doing right now, he's doing a quick research、mm-hmm. so that he can explain to us the, like, he just recommended highly, and I'm, I'm going to try it. Yeah, I don't know about you,、uh, Mr. J. Rallen, the Yokohama Ramen. Oh, yeah.、Yokohama. I will definitely go. The、mm-hmm. only place I've gone over there in, in the city is Momosan. So, I thought their ramen was really good. I would definitely、okay. go there again. Yeah. Okay.、Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, we, we just put、uh, like Alan, I. Alan is definitely, you know, he's a full professional with a briefcase, you know. Oh,、uh, yeah. Mr. 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 J. I just go with a bottle, just a paper bag and a bottle, you know, in the dream. <laughs> like, a, like the drunk you are.、No? Like, like a 40. Like a 40. You know, <laughs> the 40. Basically. You know, police officer just tell me, hey, what do you have there? And I show my van. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah,、uh, Mr. Keep it moving Mr. there. Mr. Lopez, have a nice day. <laughs> okay, I found、uh, it's called EAK Ram in New York City. EAK. 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 Okay, okay. Do you think you can share the link in the chat? Yes.、Uh, thank you very much. Here. Oh, very nice. This is your camera. Marco's like E A K. Yes. It's in the game. <laughs> it's in the case. It's in the, it's in the well, actually, this means、uh, usually Yokohama ramen is called EAK, a、uh, house type ramen. <laughs> So, EAK is some kind of the same pronunciation of Japanese. EAK. <laughs> That is、oh, why、okay. they use this EAK ramen. Very nice.、Mm. Oh, it, it closes at, at like 12 a.m.、Uh, it's not 24 hours now. Well, it opens at 11 a.m.、Oh. on <laughs> Sundays. Oh, yes.、Mm. Anyway, I like this type of ramen. So. I'm looking at the pictures. It looks really good.、Hmm. Best bet, dear listeners. I'm going to put some pictures. You know, okay, I will check.、Uh, links. It d o n t matter what pictures you put in there. Okay. One time、uh, talking about sauces, my,、um, my boss, Ed. Uh, he shared me some. Oh,、um, they do have karage wings. Some, lots of it. Some, moi- some, what is it? The, Moista Fista? No, some, some hot sauce. <laughs> some Samoan some some hot sauce. And it was like mayo with like a little bit of sweet and a, and a touch of hot. Not, not Valentina levels, but you know, flavorfulness. And,、um, and I was like, okay, nice. And、um, he dared me one time.、Uh, he brought in jalapeno peppers. I'm like, ooh. These are nice and fresh. I can accompany this with my pasta. He said, No, you're not going to eat that with your pasta. I just rinsed it and it's lunchtime, right? Yeah, lunchtime. I sat down. <laughs> yes, eat the jalapeno.、Mm. Mm. And then I said, You want some pasta? I, was, I, I heated it up, right? And I served him in another plate. And here, do you want a jalapeno pepper? Sure. And then I just, he just, <laughs> I just think, like, Why? It's, it's, it's fresh. It's a、oh, fresh、yeah. jalapeno. It's, it's, it's refreshing, actually. He's like, No, it's, 
I'm burning up. <laughs> no, it is. It's it's, 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 it's it's got a good flavor, you know. It, it you know, it has attitude, if you will. Oh, is that what we call it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to fix the the, Val- the Valentina sauce in my pocket right now. It's just <laughs> awkwardly sitting with it. <laughs> <laughs> you seem happy to see me there, Margos. What's going on there? <laughs> As he looks down. <laughs> I need to take it up from my leg. There you go. There you go. <laughs> see, it was it was in my pocket. <laughs> it's a little bit weird when I'm sitting down. I have to be careful. Hmm. A lot of people thought I was carrying water bottle. No, it's hot sauce. <laughs> It's not my hydroflask, it's my hot sauce. It's my hot sauce. Do you need water? Why? (laughs) But yeah, sorry about that, dear listeners. There's a lot of visual cues here, a lot of visual content, but I'm going to try my best to describe it. Uh, That's good banter. It's good banter. Oh, so I I do want to switch up a little bit of the combo real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Because I did want to go, uh, like, I just wanted to... um, uh, read off uh, from the the show notes uh, the 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 bullet points we had or we have for for tonight's show but I, I just wanted to read through them and then you know feel out what what you guys want to talk about real quick and if um it doesn't tic- tickle your fancies uh, at the moment then we can move on to uh, I updated it okay let me let the me last section okay thank you um so one while mr marcos is getting that ready for us um i do want to remind you guys that uh we appreciate all of you listeners uh for your time for allowing us to be in your homes in your ear in your uh headphones or uh or wherever you're listening to our podcast we appreciate it thank you uh we hope you're enjoying it as much as we're uh enjoy making it um and thank you again, Marcos, for this Google Doc that I'm going to open real quick. Um, let's see. Because we've been sharing a lot, so I try to keep it as fresh as possible. Thank you, sir. Open up a new tab. All right. <clears throat> so the first one being here, uh, fight aging and boost brain power. New discovery could be a game changer. Uh, this is a source from, what is this? Uh, neuroscience news.com uh the other one is free will won't be silenced new study challenges long uh, held beliefs um this is another neuroscience the neuroscience uh, dot-com source um another one is taking into account all our brain activity what about video games um this is from youtube joseph carlson i believe that's the source something and, that you and i you shared you know right our conversation so this is a gta 6 uh type of conversation and obviously our last uh last um part of our show as we usually do is the anime section um and it would be release announcements um uh, there's uh two two links here which would uh one is from Cheapy News and the other one is from Otaku Spirit. Um, two YouTubers that have been speaking about, I want to say, from, let's see, um, the new, the two new uh, animes that have been announced um, that are a little bit more on the risque side. Um, and then what do you the. Mean? It's, it's so is, it, is it wholesome for you there buddy <laughs> is that it's what you wholesome. call it it's wholesome. <laughs> okay okay and not then, PG um, though <laughs> no obviously not more like R18 type of things right <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other one is uh, main returns wit studio so um, this is another uh, youtuber that is reviewing or talking about speaking about uh, wit studio um, and a character named Maine. Um, so I, I think Marcos might want to speak about that one at some point. So just going first, off. Yeah. I want to share the Qualcomm thing that Mr. J wanted to share. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 
So the Qualcomm had a summit in Hawaii. We spoke, I think we mentioned it like maybe two or three. Yeah, like maybe two or three podcasts ago where they had a summit over in Hawaii. And um, being that we enjoy Qualcomm because that's the chipset that's in most of our phones, uh, especially if you have like a Samsung. Um, wanted yes, to get uh, just the point of views of everyone. If, if you guys saw their their youtube video about it or some of the youtube um uh i guess youtube uh, personalities that review tech that went over to uh hawaii for this summit um if if anyone here has seen the videos or has any interest in the summit or where they spoke of what they spoke about and like the new little um advancements of what the chipset will be doing going forward uh, as these new things are placed into your phone. Uh, I, I was excited to see about it. I, I want to get everybody's reaction if, if they have something to say about it, right? So, Mr. J, if you will. Yep. Hawaii. That's it. No, <laughs> let me just say the applause. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. J. But yeah, uh, I think I'm pass it over to Marcos. No, 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 I want to hear your scoop. But what about my scoop? You were saying that you wanted to share some scoop stuff. Ice cream? Ice cream scoop? Yeah, ice cream scoop. Oh, come on. Uh, hmm. I don't. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Something about the the, the new the new tiles from Samsung. The new tile. Oh, yeah, but I thought you said the Qualcomm thing. Oh, that's oh. Mm. Dang it. Okay. I was rewinding. So say here. So, because uh, I was editing the part where uh, Al said that uh, the new Galaxy tags have a GPS locator in it. So it oh, turns what? out it doesn't. Really, it doesn't. What does yeah, it? Yeah, the then? way the way it works is it connects to most Galaxy devices, and it pulls GPS information from those devices. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. So, so like it kind of like determines the general location based off of that and i think like a general location where the actual tag is based off of the distance between the galaxy device and the the smart tag too so it gives you a general location of where it is within like i think 30 feet or 30 whatever the, the range of bluetooth is okay so so that's how it gets its actual location it doesn't have a gps tag on it or module or whatever we like to call it. I forgot what we call it. I call it smart tag two. Exactly. To tag yeah. or not to tag, that is the it question. does it does not have a GPS chip in it. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, okay. it does similar with the with the air tags from Apple, they don't have a GPS. They pull the, the GPS from the from like iPhones. So, so it's more benefit- like a Bluetooth, I think? Bluetooth yeah. triangulation. Yeah, Bluetooth just pulls the GPS from the phones, and then it kind of gives a, a general guess. Of, well, not well, not a guess. It calculates the, the distance between where the tags are and where in the Bluetooth uh, so, phone is. So the more iPhones around, the more precise the the, the location. Yeah. Understood. Oh, and you were going to say something about the ARM system. So, with so the, more, the more sauce, the better the dishes. Sauce, you say? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sauce, Marcos. <laughs> oh my Marcos oh my Marco just back. had to whip out the big bottle <laughs> let me put it back into my pocket <laughs> <laughs> put his 40 nice back in his pocket yeah he's like he keep it safe <laughs> nice and warm next to my body heat you know so yeah Marco you were saying something about an arm system you were talking about as well my arm yeah, on Qualcomm, that they're going to try to do a new ARM system as well. Oh, that they're releasing a, a desktop, another desktop, uh, I guess, CPU. But it's based off the of ARM instead of uh, x86. Um, So for that one, they're like advertising. I think I forgot. It's like the Snapson, the, the Snapdragon X Elite. Um, I think it's supposed to be more powerful than like a typical x86 so like they compared it to like the i9 
from Intel or like the AMD Ryzen series. Uh, they even compared it to the Apple Silicon that the M1. Yeah, the M1 and the M2 that were around. Let's say that is interesting. Because the M3. Uh huh. Oh, you are talking about a a just like CPU. Right. Um, well, essentially, it is a CPU. I'm using a ARM processor. Uh, I'm using Cortex M ARM processor for Embedded system, just for my experiments. But you are talking about not my uh, not MPU microprocessor. You are talking about a CPU. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The uh, it's similar to what uh, Apple the M the M chips. Okay. So similar to that, where they have a, a it's basically a. a a combined or joint package where they have a CPU and a GPU built in oh, okay. to this chip, and it isn't like the same where like Intel has the integrated graphic. It's supposed to be more powerful mm-hmm. than that. Um, so according to a uh, PC World, it is outperforming. Uh, let's see. Can you share your screen? The, never. Oh. So it's me, a uh, ARM processor become competitor of Intel and AMD. Sounds like uh, I think it started to become a competitor okay. when Apple mm-hmm. started because I think Apple Silicon is based off of an ARM processor. Okay. Oh, oh yes. Okay. So right now, so these are uh, what is this? Uh, so this is a, a benchmark program. Mm-hmm. So PC Mark 10. Um, so it says here, the higher the number, the better the performance. So right now it's outperforming the i7s from Intel. What generation? Doesn't matter. It's all of them. <laughs> Imagine. Uh 13th generation. That's crazy. Marcos, look look in, look into the eyes. Look into the eyes of your camera. Oh. Uh it's also outperforming the Ryzen 7 from AMD. And then I think this is their <laughs> chips, the 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 Microsoft and Qualcomm chipset, which is the XQ3. Um, so that's one benchmarking software. This is yeah, Cinebench is another one, which uh, yeah, it outperforms uh, the i7, the Ryzen 9, uh, the M2 system. And same thing with XQ. So yeah, these are those. Those are the the competitors that they have for this chip. Um, trying to show. I think they had a, a picture here with uh, their CEO. Uh, yeah. So it has seventy percent less power than the competitor with single threaded CPU performance. Um. So that's the, the keep in mind that oh. if you want to do multi-threaded stuff, that might be a little bit more difficult. I, I don't know how they do with that. Is but, multi-threading like video games? Mm, no, well, not just that. So it's different things, Marcos. Understand. Look at me in the eyes. There you go. Uh, but yeah, so. So this is uh, th- like, I think they had out I think you said here what they have. So they had a Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, a Book 3 Pro, an Acer Swift Edge. So these are all laptops. I think the market for this is meant to be for laptop computers. Um, And they're saying, so I, I don't know how true this is, but they're saying that they're outperforming the most competition. And these are their they're kind of uh, what yeah. they're what they're showing. Oh, sorry, they're uh, now I'm confusing. Yeah. Uh, you, it's me. A uh, Qualcomm made CPU with ARM um, uh, um architecture. Is that correct? Yeah. And this is and Samsung made some PC using Qualcomm CPU. Is that correct? Right. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. And yeah, these are just the numbers that they're trying to show people that, hey, look, we are doing better than the uh, competitors. Okay. Like uh, the competition up there, basically. Mm. Uh, so I think 
yeah so that was that was like the big take so that was a big takeaway that they're doing better performance wise and they're doing it with less power which is good because that means that potentially you can have better battery life yeah actually that. that makes sense because usually arms processor is uh, used by uh, embedded embedded systems which has yes. batteries so they know which how to reduce power uh, power for uh, from batteries so exactly mm. which in in this case i think qualcomm has an edge because they've been doing it for years now um they're just trying to up the scale uh with basically replacing your typical like cpu like you said the intel cpus and the amds as um i i i heard that this is supposed to be like pretty big but we won't know until the product comes out on um like an actual computer which i don't know when exactly they're gonna come out uh but yeah, I mean, like I said, Qualcomm is known for uh, the Snapdragon chipset. So like any American phone, Android phone, more than like it will have uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon oh, processors. Sorry, uh, and I think, uh-huh. Previously, what kind of, now uh, I'm not sure, Qualcomm, do you think Qualcomm made some processor without ARM architecture. Uh, previously, what kind of uh, chip do Qualcomm make? Well, so they make, they do use, so like the Snapdragon Snap, uh, processors sorry, that uh, we have on our phone. What is Snapdragon? Is so Snapdragon is the, the brand of chips that they have. Um, okay. It can be anywhere from like they're they're basically most of them are ARM processors. Okay. So like for example, the S twenty three has I think a Snapdragon eight Gen two. Um, the phones that me and Marcos have I think is Gen one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then on top of that, they also make I think they call their. Well, so on top of these process, this, the the ARM processor for these, they make um, processors for modems okay. as well. So the but modem everything that, is, it, uh, comes from ARM um, um, process ARM um, architecture. Uh, I'm not sure about the Qualcomm, okay, uh, the okay. modem ones. So the the Snapdragons, the ones that, like I said, like the gen that are in this phone, they're definitely ARM. Okay, okay. I don't remember about the modem okay. processors. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for the most part, I think almost every phone in America here has some type of chipset from Qualcomm. Oh, okay. Since they're the ones that sell the, the modem chip. And as far as I remember, okay. from even from Apple, Apple still buys from them. So they're like, uh, they have a big hand over everyone. Okay. Actually, but I think Apple is trying to, to get out of that. Actually, I'm now I'm using a ST micro ARM processor, so maybe, maybe I also should think about Qualcomm MPU. <laughs> I think Qualcomm just since Qualcomm just focuses on like cell phone, like ah, telecommunications. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's the okay. thing. So you the <laughs> they, I think the one like the Cortex M. Which one yes, was it? I used a Cortex M4. M4. Or I think that's uh, it might be it's a microcontroller. Yes, right? microcontroller. Yes, that's yeah, a little a little bit. It is an ARM processor, but I think in this case it's a little bit different. Okay, okay. Maybe um, your processor has much power than that's yeah, it has. <laughs> it has a lot more different okay. yeah things they could do. Okay. I understand but uh but yeah and so i don't like if you're looking for like um i'm guessing the work you do it might be something a little bit different okay okay hmm. but yeah that's uh, i think uh, then another thing that another big thing that qualcomm was trying to put out is that with their new chipset so that's the gen 3 and I think even the X Elite, the ones I just told about, I think one one thing they're pushing is that 
um, they can do, they have AI on the chip. So like what Marcos does where you like ask questions or generate images, um, the, Qual the Qualcomm phones that are, or phones that are powered by Qualcomm will have the ability to do all of these AI functions, but it's not done like, like with ChatGPT is done through servers. This won't be done on the phone. So even if you're disconnected from the this, this network or from internet, uh, it's going to be uh, done on the phone. Just like Marcos' big nose over here. <laughs> you know, making images of his big nose to see what it is. Well, let me see if I have I think they had a demo of that. Demo mic? I don't know. Well, they don't have a demo, but they have a page on it. So they'll have, uh, so yeah, so they have 10, so they have perfected and optimized it for 10 billion parameters. Okay. Um, so they have here, like, you can, they have an AI assistant that works on device. Um, so I think this is for like, uh, wow, that is loud. That scared me. So yeah, so this is like image manipulation. Um, yeah, so that's like, making brand images from a set of parameters. Uh, but this is all like, this is not done. This is all done on device. Uh, so that's the, the big uh, take. And of course, it's low power. That's the, the big takeaway is that you're doing AI on device with low power. More efficient, if you will. Exactly. So yeah, that's what they're, they're pushing over here. Yes, now AI is... Uh, everywhere we can see AI so <laughs> maybe from next next week I also will learn uh, what is AI and about programming AI you say I'm <laughs> prompting you say <laughs> Marco is like delicious <laughs> mm. like the hot sauce <laughs> oishi this <laughs> oishi <laughs> And now the other stuff that I, I also wanted to share that was interesting for me was, you know, the mental potatoes stuff, all in the brain, you know, <laughs> for me, uh, the thing that I want to say show is um, fighting aging and uh, uh, and boost brain power. New discovery could be a game changer. So it says scientists at Osaka University have identified a, a key inflammatory pathway that plays a major role in aging so this pathway known as this scientific name um, cgas sting sting uh, pathway is rep uh, responsible for activation of immune uh, cells in the response of cellular damage by blocking this pathway, uh, researchers were able to extend the lifespan of mice up to 20%. This discovery could lead to the development of new treatments or drugs, uh, drugs to treat uh, age-related uh, diseases. Or, for example, um, for example, uh, there's like um, I don't know, like now. I don't know what to say. This is just just interesting for me. Like, there's stuff in your brain that they can block, so you can basically either regenerate faster or extend uh, extend your you know your life. And they were able to already prove this in mice. Obviously, there's going to be decades, years before all this happens with actual people. So it's you know exciting for me to. to yes, actually, I my feeling is usually as you know if. As you know, a uh, biology system is very complicated. 
So if you stop one pathway, probably that affect many things. I it's not that simple. I don't know. Actually, that is very interesting, but I don't know what is just real effect to some animals. So maybe even, for example, maybe pass can uh, uh, they can uh, extend twenty percent age, but still I don't know what happened because of that. Maybe I should I should read in that paper. But I, my feeling is uh, animal is very complicated, so it is very difficult to modify aging. <laughs> it, it's you feel it in your heart now. You say like something's not right here. <laughs> Understood. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Wow. Um, but th- that's very interesting. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank, I, thank you. Yeah, I. But actually, <laughs> another interesting issue uh, topic is. If we can able to make longer life, what happened in the in the earth? Probably it makes some crisis of population because because we have limited that. foods and limited in place. So, do you have any idea about that? What happened if we can we can have twice life? <laughs> It's the Jurassic World question. Like, it's not if we should do it, or it's if we. It's not if we can't do it. It's if we should do it. You know, like we were trying to. Like the scientists are trying to prove that it's possible, not the consequences of it happening. Yeah. You know, like we we know we can. It's possible to do, but what are the consequences? I didn't think about that. It's not my job to think about that. Uh-huh. My job is to see if we can do it. Oh, yes. But. The, the, can we just like raise an, another interesting question where it's like the population of certain countries isn't multiplying at the rate it should where we have places like South Korea, Japan and even in the United in States the US, yeah. yeah where we we have dropping birth rates yes. <laughs> so I mean yeah you, you can extend life and maybe there, there's a question there if we have enough resources for uh, to sustain ourselves but at the same time it's like there's if we're not producing more offspring then I, I, I want to say we'll be extending our lives but does that make any sense where everybody is like relatively old <laughs> and we can't and we can't get infrastructure up we can't get things to uh to work the way they should and we'll just be like a a country of old people mm-hmm. trying to help more old people uh and there's no real like uh, offspring to, to speak of yes i hmm. So, I mean, there's, there, I guess it's two extremes at yes, the same yes. time. <laughs> and then, like, we can say that there isn't uh, enough resources, but I think, I think there, I want to say there is enough resources. I think it, it just goes to show you, I, I think, for, for first world countries where f- resources to, to our, I guess, eyes, to our perspective, there's a, a lot of abundance. It just seems that there's pockets in the world where it's not as abundant because of where they're located. But to be quite honest, I think a lot of the population of the world can fit on one of the continents and there's enough space for a lot of people. But um, <clears throat> as far as resources go, like if we were to talk geopolitically speaking a little bit or not geopolitically, but more like a, a globally, I want to say like most of the wheat and other types of flour and stuff are produced in like the the United States bread basket. Uh, a lot of corn uh, is is probably farmed in probably places like China or something like that. And other crops and stuff are produced in other countries that, you know, are sold and bought in, in between continents or countries so that's why we have you know fruits and vegetables all year round because we have countries that we do uh you know uh, uh, trade with that that is able to trade us these type of things 
um so i i, I want to say that we do have enough uh for everyone it's just that unfortunately there's a lot of red tape between countries where uh some countries like to not be charitable with uh the things that they have and, and there's other countries that are more i guess one way than more than 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 another and i i guess the 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 unfortunate uh conclusion is that there's a lot of uh haves and a lot of have nots and because of that situation and i i see that a lot of the third world countries are are getting to a industrialized uh, uh level and they're able to have uh disposable money i guess you could say uh, i think one of the best um uh or, or the, the yeah i guess you could say it's one of the better examples is like a country like india where they have a lot of a big a very big population yes and and they're moving towards industrialization mm-hmm. where you see that they're very uh, intelligent with uh with, with i guess you can say technology and uh, a lot of um the outsourcing that places like the united states um does is to india for a lot of a lot of uh jobs and stuff like that and a lot of the the younger generation there is able to move up economically speaking where they can get out of the situation that they find themselves in where there might be not as much uh growth um in like south american countries as of late but we're seeing a change in that mm. right but there uh, compared to one country to another uh and i'll just take mexico as an example there n- might not be a lot of social economic moving upward um as uh, uh maybe a couple of years ago there is now more of that move to to be um economically independent but even in the in the situation before they live a lot of the people live in the, in in again uh, example like mexico even if you were poor you probably had quite a bit of land or maybe you were able to go and forage for food because certain places in mexico that's very plentiful like um there would be valleys where there's like natural fruit trees or stuff like that yes. where people can actually grab their stuff um again this is just one of many examples uh but again uh, i guess two extremes are are, are what i'm, yes, I'm seeing I, here i understand but i i don't know now uh, the population of the earth increase is increasing or decreasing i think in, do you know any idea about as that? of as of this year as of 2023 yes. i mean that's a great Probably that's a great question increasing, i guess you know I there's a it, website there's a I website think, called um death counter that shows you exactly how many people are dying around the world okay. versus how many people are being born mm-hmm. and um I think I mean, we're increasing in age, but I don't think we're increasing in population per se. I think the a statistic I heard mm. earlier this week was like for every 100 South Korean people, I think there's only four grandchildren out of those 100 people. Yeah. Yes, I so definitely that's Japan crazy. and uh, South Korea and in these countries mm. The, the United States, yes, it's even lost. I'm, I'm looking lose population, but I don't know about whole country, whole countries. Oh yeah, no, I'm, neither do I. Oh, still increasing, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, Now is okay. Uh, seven? No, <laughs> I I can't calculate. One, uh, uh, two, three. One, two, three. Eight zeros. Seven eight zeros. <laughs> uh, thousand. Mm. Was like trillion maybe or billion? Uh, seven. 
Oh, how do you read that, um, Mr. Marcos or Mr. J? How many zeros? Uh, seven. seven zeros. Yes. So three is a thousand, six is million, million. seven is billion. Billion. Okay. Okay. So seven billions increase from last year. Oh no, seven million. Seven million. I think seven. Seventy million. If there's seven zeros, there's like seventy million. Uh, Check it. Here's here's the st- real time counter. Okay. Uh, pe- there's a uh, current world. Oh, population. okay. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, right now, there's eight billion. Eight billion. When there used to okay. be nine. Eight billion. Seven hundred seventy-seven million. Okay. Nine hundred eighty-two thousand. Okay. 240 250 it's increasing okay <laughs> but it used to be nine oh okay. so you already know what happened in the past two three years that decreased it well that's interesting okay births just in this year mm. 126 million okay 183 thousand okay 300 this year okay this year the, okay these are the births right now. Okay. Per, per second. And then th- these are the deaths. Yes, okay. Obviously. 57 million. 57 mm. million deaths worldwide. Okay. And just deaths today. Okay. 164,000. Well, and I'm just keeping it rounded up. Okay. So, what does the net population mean with the growth, I guess? Yes. 69 million. Oh, Ooh, look at the, the, oh, the health on there, mm-hmm. on that one. Ooh. Public education. Oh, okay. Public military expenditure. Okay. Cars okay. produced. Mm. Bicycles oh, yes. produced is many. So basically, yeah. mm, if that mm, if they can make twenty percent longer life, probably twenty percent. Uh, increasing of much mm, more more 20% increasing of population hmm maybe maybe <laughs> maybe yeah but like I think again how how long would that life be extended mm. if it's only ex- like expanded on about like five years or six months like how much of a difference does six months mm. to like years compare mm. as well? So I think that's also yes, something yes. we can take into consideration. Yes, yes. It's not like they're doubling their life as in like if you live to 70, you'll live to 180 yeah, or something right, like that, yeah. right? I doubt like mm. even even if you were to get up to 100, how useful mm. or <laughs> how much of a f- yes, carbon yes. footprint are you yes, actually? That's important, yeah. <laughs> Be, being right, you're it's right. not like you're driving a car yes, at a hundred right. years old. <laughs> That'd be crazy. But actually, from uh, so from uh, Marcos' information, probably uh, just extend age. Probably aging become less. Is that correct? Uh, allegedly, like they were able to prolong the lifespan of the mice on an average of twenty percent. Okay, so it's me. We don't know just a uh, just we don't know just a uh, that means just extend age uh, maybe uh, maybe 80 years become 100 yes, or yes, we don't know that makes more longer younger period. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's not in like the saying is it's not how many miles you've run it's um the quality of those miles oh, yeah. that you run. like if you if you've been running ragged doing all nighters or every year or yeah. every night or even um 
going to heavy stress areas, like we're doing something that causes your life to shorten, mm. not eating healthy or not, um, yeah, yeah. we're not doing that much exercise. Could it's, it's too many factors. Yes, like you yes, you're right. Mm. Not only your body, yes, your yes. Head, but also outside factors. Yes, yes. Mm. You're right. Unless you want to do the Elon Musk thing, get yourself uploaded. To what? <laughs> <laughs> to the Giga to Chat meta? computer. <laughs> to the meta computer? <laughs> it's a Starlink. <laughs> go to the... St- oh, wait. Wait a minute. Starlink? Maybe go to space, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Your consciousness to space? Maybe. I don't know. I want to go... So you want to go to Mars? <laughs> a whole new meaning of going, getting high. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And with that one, with your consciousness being uploaded, what about the next point? It says free will won't be silenced. New study challenges uh, long held beliefs. Let's see. A, um, a team of researchers led by Professor Masao Io at the University of Tokyo have developed a novel approach to studying uh what is it to studying free will their research uh challenges the long-standing libet uh the libet paradigm which uh suggests that unconscious unconscious brain activity precedes conscious uh decision making this new study provides evidence that conscious awareness may play a more active role in our decision making uh, process than previously thought what does that mean uh what is the even the no whatchamacallit the long-standing libet paradigm the libet paradigm is uh, an experiment i don't remember what decade or i don't remember what year it was made but it was basically people being told stand here look at this timer clock and think of whatever random activity take note of when you started being aware that you're making in this activity an example of me um moving my fingers doing this and there's a timer in front of me take note of when you thought about it and when you noticed that there was you moving your 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 hand or your or your wrist you know and they, they noticed that they're on average that there was a 0.5 to 0.350 millisecond difference of you thinking to your to your hand mm-hmm. moving. So that was the paradigm. They found that that was the average for their data set. That, that was the average of their data set. So um, this sci- these scientists in Tokyo found that no, it could even be longer. Or it could, this par- this um, paradigm can be proven that your consciousness is even further ahead thinking me explaining to you i've me without thinking i already thought about what the words that are coming out of my mouth or the muscle movements of my lips to you listener and to you kenichi alan and Hoshi. like there's a lot more to be understood of your brain thinking the the stuff that the movements of me dancing doing whatever to me explaining to you and to you the dear listener that's hearing hearing me right now in your ears that there's there's a lot more to be understood and it's that's a long path it's a long way mm. more than just a half a millisecond or a third of a millisecond that's my yeah because <laughs> that is so interesting actually mm. he is very famous person in neuroscience in japan so okay. mm. So he found uh, some plasticity, plasticity in several cortex, and mm, I I did his paper, and also uh, we can find many. Uh, we can find his name in textbook in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he's a very famous person. So, but it's I'm not sure it's. Weirdness is very difficult, one of the most difficult part of brain. So, of it's, course. It's, uh, I can't say, hmm, I can't say. Actually, I still I don't know what is definition of weirdness. 
So there we go. One big interesting topic is we have willingness or not. Actually, I think it just depends on defini- definition. It means our life is just programmed. Or, for, for example, AI can have willingness or not. But if, for example, if, if、um, many people know ChatGTP, can, we can talk with ChatGTP. <laughs> so, of course, we know ChatGTP is computer, but if we don't know ChatGTP, ChatGTP is computer or not, maybe we can feel that AI has willingness. <laughs> So, still, I'm not sure what is, what is willingness. What, what is will? <laughs> Our will. <laughs> so, I didn't, read, unpack, I didn't read his、uh, paper and、uh, his、uh, news. So, I don't know what he did, but probably he used some、uh, behavior test with channel opsing, I guess. Just, just I'm guessing. Channel l o a d o p s i n g is one、uh, newest technology of neuroscience which can control neurons with light. Let there be light. Now, many people put LED in a mouse brain. And that LED light can activate neuron activities. So, maybe I can show a very famous picture of that.、Uh, so, you're saying that they put like little probes on the head of a mouse? Yes, yes, exactly.、Uh, I can show. And is this like light on, light off, or does it mean different colors of light?、Uh, it depends. You can control、uh, several neurons with different colors. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For example,、uh, please wait. Dear listeners, we're looking at Kenichi thinking and doing his, will, his awareness of searching for awareness, you know? Is it, are we in the matrix? Am I in the matrix? Are you in the matrix? No. No. <laughs> It's like pick the red pill or the blue pill. Okay, I put something.、Uh, this is New York, New York Times、uh, article, I think. Control. Desk for the neural switchboard. What? Okay. And now every neural scientist is doing this. Put the LED on a brain of mouse, mice. Yeah. Then control some、uh, particular neuron types. I- inhibitory、yes. neurons or excitatory neurons or some c o l i n e r g i c Gabas can be many neurons. Yes. So probably he did this kind of experiment, I guess.、Mm-hmm. It, like, I like how we have, always, whenever we get an idea of what our consciousness is, it always, like, once we find something new, oh, It needs to be updated. More research has to be done. It's never going to be, oh, we found everything about the brain.、Mm-hmm. It's never going to happen, is it? <laughs> You're right.、It's, I think、mm, now we know only maybe 0.1% of brain. We know only 0.1% of brain. So <laughs> still, maybe. And this is the brain trying to learn about the brain.、Mm? This is the brain trying to learn about the brain.、Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Is, is this a meme? And I feel like this, this is a meme. I, is this meme? Is this a, like, I feel like this, this is a joke that your <laughs> brain is trying to learn about itself. Yeah, I don't know. This is me. With not, experiments. But, yeah, but exactly that, that, 
we are doing now that that type of things. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> we want to put some some microscope. We want. I want to put microscope on my brain. <laughs> or If you could, would you? Would you do it? I would want, you do a live stream of your own head? <laughs> I want. <laughs> oh, Isn't wow. that what like uh, Elon is trying to do with Neuralink? Oh yeah, yes, yes. Mm. This is life, tech, and sundry. LTS for short. And what is sundry? It's our experiences put in a melting pot to the internet. Join Alan, Marcos, and Josue, the hosts of LTS. We live in an ever-changing and exciting world. So join us on this wild ride called the LTS Podcast. Follow us at LT Sundry on Twitter, LTS.pod on Instagram, Life, Tech, and Sundry on YouTube, in all your favorite podcast distribution services. Stay frosty. What do you mean? Like a, sub, like a subscription to a, an internet connection in your head? I think what he try, he tries to do is um, for your ideas to like kind of um, translate to like digital information yes, or something yes, like so. that. Like so, ones and zeros? M- maybe uh, to a certain extent. But um, what... What, what I think the ultimate thing is that he wants to do is for uh, and again I could be speculating right here I'm not sure if this is exactly what he wants but he wants to have some sort of a digital connection from your brain to a computer in order for you to mm. like say you say uh, you know how we have our remote control for like a, a television or um, you know something like that and you have a little uh a uh, uh, voice recording or uh, not voice recording but like voice recognition and you say uh, play you know this anime or something like that or this TV show and, and you know it, it listens to your voice and it, it automatically shows up I think he wants to do that but with your brain you think it and it starts uh, producing something mm-hmm. on the screen an interface right? kind of like an interface like he wants to have that connection of something that's um because uh, from what i i understand it's like your your synapses or the the pulses of electricity that go from your brain yeah. from one neuron to another yeah. it's like if you could harness that information and, and digitally yeah. manipulate it to it being information mm-hmm. that could go to like a, a, a yeah. computer another computer like your mega computer to a less powerful computer but Actually, maybe you can do you like know, your consciousness do you know a mm. kokak uh, kidotai that is a famous anime in japan and probably he want to make some kind of that that mm. device okay maybe an interface <laughs> okay so, like a, so a you're saying that life's an anime now hmm hmm Or is anime or is is anime imitating life or is life imitating anime? That's my question. Is so mm. you mean? Need to please say, say it again. Life is life. Yeah. Life copying anime. Okay. Or is anime copying life? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See that we need we need neuroscientists to find this out. <laughs> hmm. Like, w- for example, um, I I'm visually impaired. My specialist that does the cornea situation is going is going or went to San Francisco to find out the latest technology of how to interconnect your brain activity okay. to 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 apps on okay, your phone. Okay, Let's say to okay, apps or software. Okay to be a substitute of your eyes with your camera I understand okay and that um, mm-hmm. we were uh, we were talking about that in my last doctor's appointment and he was saying there's some some present um, seminars oh, there's some seminars that um, I'm gonna be going he was telling me and I'll, I'll let you know next time that you will have an appointment with me which was like and it will be in six months and um, he said that um, yeah like I'll let you know and what's the latest breakthrough with brain I I connection with potential apps security okay, system maybe connected to Neuralink I don't know what you know the 
n now that you, if you can't see, you'll be able to see through a camera or or, or through through something else. You know, like uh, what's the word? The Google glasses, augmented, augmented reality. Through glasses, mm -hmm. like uh, glasses that have a camera or something like that. But um, this this has been going since before before 2020. Mm -hmm. um, he was going to different seminars, going to uh, uh, conventions about the medical conventions. He's he's a specialist with the with the retina and the cornea, and he said he was telling me that he was observing that 70 percent of our brain processing power goes to oh, us yeah. being able to see. I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that. But is that is that a specific part of the brain? Because mm -hmm. you know how the brain know. is like is divided up into sections. Yeah. And I think what happens is that I think we we generalize that the brain works in, in like it works in a cohesive manner. But there's it sections. Like yeah, right. But yeah. there's sections in the brain that do specific jobs <laughs> that ultimately scientists and doctors don't really know exactly that's why there's research for yes. it to be so they can map out yeah. the reason why their sections yeah. and what they actually do that's, that's why crazy. when you say 70 it's crazy <laughs> go go ahead go ahead i'm oh, no, sorry but just uh, actually it's a uh, uh, previous scientists make some brain maps of function so right. huh? Uh, our brain have some a uh, visual cortex or a uh, uh, motor cortex or something, but actually right. uh, from that maps we feel that part, that brain is working for one thing, vision or. But actually, if you measure whole brain, always every brain is working. Right. So it is not easy to say some part is only for vision or some part is only for motor. It's some kind of uh, information right. just goes back and forth. Mm. So... Uh, still, it's more complex. It's more complex. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> yeah. very difficult. So, but, for example, if you think about retina, maybe uh, retina is just sensor. So maybe mm -hmm. we can replace some part, something f to some elect el electric device. So as you said, how does it interpret that data though into your brain now? Yeah. That's the interface. Yes, of the yes. Question. So as you said, maybe uh, uh, there is some device with without uh, with some internal connection between uh, listener a circuit to computer a neural mm -hmm. link maybe, maybe. <laughs> but i think it is very difficult to connect our cortex uh, connect between pc and our cortex directory it's more complicated like the matrix hmm? like matrix, you can't put yeah, like matrix, a usb yeah. stick in your brain mm -hmm. and like it it starts working yeah i think that is does it even difficult <laughs> Mm -hmm. Does it work with voltage, chemicals, or a combo, a combination? I think combination. It's that's complicated. Yes, actually, yeah. synapse is made by not only electric, electric, uh, electrical information, but also chemical connections. So, so we don't know. Actually, as I said, we know only 0 0.0, maybe 0.001 percent of our brain. <laughs> so we know wow. that we know little. Uh, That's actually, all we know. Uh, if we compare with personal computer, yes, probably still we don't know what is resistor and what is a uh, capacitor. What the really? So actually, now I'm, uh, I'm. I'm researching about snaps it's like of course it's not we can't compare but it's like researching resist one resistor but still i don't say i know what is snaps <laughs> mm, so wow. it's 
Mm, still, we don't know anything about brain, I think. So, the more we say we know, we can guarantee that we don't know we don't, a lot of the brain. Yeah, right. Actually, some scientists uh, major. Uh, do you know what is C elegance? C elegance is like war. War, 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 war. war. Okay. They have 380 neurons inside. Okay. And now neuron scientists can measure every uh, activity of every neuron simultaneously. Hmm. But if, even so, they can't predict their behavior. Why would you want to predict the behavior of each neuron? Hmm? Sorry? Why, why would you want to know? Oh, because uh, we, we want, uh, they want to know relationship between activity of whole neurons and behaviors. So, like a pattern. Pattern, like it, yes, it's pattern a, or something. A yeah, the action potential pattern and the information pattern. But still, we, they can't understand what is that meaning and they can't predict. <laughs> so, so, you see a picture of your brain neuron firing. Yes, yes. Like, like what does this yes, mean? Like that. Mm-hmm. So it means mm. each neuron has probably 10,000 synapses. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe we have to measure four synapses of neurons for understanding our behaviors. But maybe even we know whole activity of synapses, maybe still that is not enough. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> you know, me just thinking, how many neurons did you say there were? Uh, in C elegans, I think 385 or 6, I think. I can't. So, 380. Jesus. 380. And each one of those neurons have 10,000 10, different synapses, I guess. 10,000 plus. Let's just say 10,000 yes. to keep it even. Um, so you, isn't that like a like a poten- like a power like three hundred eighty times yes, to, yes, the, to exactly. the ten yes. ten thousand power? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know that computers don't calculate that high, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's completely and also big difference between computer and our brain is computer is di- uh, digital. It's binary. The binary, yes, and it's exactly. binary. But our snap is not binary. It's some kind of analog statements. Is that does that mean it's more advanced or it's just efficient? Yeah, I, I think both. both. <laughs> it, I think both because yeah. it's able to actually like uh, what adapt to things, right? You're right. Mm. That's just crazy. Yeah, though. natural selection. Uh, Mother Nature is crazy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's just a cop out when we say natural selection. True, true. I agree. But I'm just saying, for example, even the the current data with quantum computing, which is a binary times four, that instead of being a bit, it's going to be, they're trying to calculate with qubits, Mm. which is the fourth power. Mm. Still, sorry, still not enough for the brain activity, which is to the 10,000 power. I think we have, I forget how much, how many, uh, maybe I will check. Like, I have a brain sample here, now imagine you <laughs> See, it's in a jar. <laughs> My pickle jar. I'm sure it is wait. I have some... So, so, they were able to calculate, they were able to find how each neuron, how many fi- synapses, fire styles it has. They were able to find how many neurons there are on average. These are averages or every single person has this amount of neurons? I think average. Okay, average. And the same, the, fi- the firing, the synapses, same thing is an average, yes. right? So, the, they could be more, they could be less. Yeah, it's an educated I, guess. <laughs> literally, the, the most educated guess. My, my head hurts. <laughs> now, does it really hurt? Or what is this that I'm feeling? <laughs> and now, yeah, like... It, 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 if you can imagine, like every every square inch of your body has a receptor that lets your brain know a that sensor. something is cold or hot or in pain mm. or it, it it's being tickled or something. Mm. Temperature, you, right? Yeah. Like you imagine, like those synapses firing off in like a cohesive conjunction, mm. letting you know everything or like even your eyes. The when you were mentioning yeah, right. the the fact that your that your vision uh, allows you to 
that I'm breathing even mm, without yeah, even thinking no, about no, it. No, no, but like back to your eyes, like it even lets you know the sensibility it has to like light or it lets you know that something like I don't know if you ever had your your eyes like feel really hot mm. or really like even though that type of sensibility or with your hearing you can hear when water is boiling by default no that's hot or bro or or say you're dehydrated and your eyes play tricks on you with hallucination like you you imagine like the complex chemistry yeah. <laughs> and firing mm. of synapses going off in your brain when you're doing well compared to when you're not doing mm. well like all that stuff is like yeah that's not on even the back end on, we're, we're yeah, not even you, we don't even know yeah. we don't even know how, yeah, how that works actually, and how your mood or your mood can also like play into a fact maybe you see things with rose colored glasses when you feel like butterflies in your stomach because you like the like that girl or something like that just as an example or am i, or am I just hungry <laughs> right <laughs> 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 yeah. No. Actually, now my my one of my project is uh, measuring synaptic actual synaptic strengths. And uh, oh, oh, now you voltage? Yes. For actually, not uh, in my case, I'm using sodium, not voltage, because mm. uh, there are several reasons. But I, my, uh, my project is just I can make, I, uh, my project is I make uh, some technique for comparing a uh, single synaptic strengths. But no, you, now you're introducing a whole different level yeah. of, of synapses. <laughs> but actually problem is still we don't know how many voltages, any, anybody don't know how many voltages is in Snaps, one snaps because snaps is too small, so we can't measure voltage of snaps. So, so when they say that your brain activity works on the equivalent power of a light bulb, mm. that's just an educated guess. Mm, sorry, when they say that allegedly the amount of electricity flowing in your in your yes, brain that. is the same amount of power that can power up one light bulb. Oh, that's, I that's don't just, know, but maybe that's just. Maybe I I, That's like, I don't know how much voltage of a uh, or wattage hmm? or watts. Well, I, well, I watts. don't know how how watts in our brain, but in about synapse, we think that is probably one synaptic input. Make maybe uh, maybe around twenty to. 50 millivolt, I guess, but any, nobody knows about that. Wow. A millivolt is one to the minus three or minus six mi is one mini millivolt. Uh, sorry, uh, it's me. Zero point to the negative three power? Uh, like point yeah, zero right. zero yes, zero one. Right. Yes, yes. Zero point zero, zero like, um, to one point zero two zero volt. Yeah, that's a lot of zero. Minus three. Yeah. To the other way. That's like a what? Like a triple A battery? <laughs> Less. <laughs> Less than <two. laughs> Less, I'm, I'm just saying, yo, the brain, the more you know, the more you know that you don't know. <laughs> mm. I don't the know more yet. You inquire, it's a, like, I'm trying to inquire some goalposts, some, some, some boundaries. But now using this boundary, I know that my boundaries are wrong. So let me change my boundaries again. Oh, and these are wrong again. Let me update my boundaries. <laughs> like neuroscience tries to find the, 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 the borders of your brain. But once they, they set a border, they find that that border is incorrect. So they're trying You're to right. increase the You're border. Right. Increase the You're border. Right. Increase the border. <laughs> so we know, mm. uh, yes, as you said, now we know how much we don't know our brain. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's the title. Mm. How much do I know? Yeah, I know that don't I don't know. know. Um, maybe <laughs> 0. 0.0001 percent. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the title right there. You, you, you thank you for the for the title right there. I know that I don't know. Mm. I thought I knew, yes, I but I one don't. One big problem is 
still we don't have big step of understanding of our brain. For example, we there is big step step about biology. That mm. is DNA. That is, I think, big step. When we know what is a, a genes, probably we can we understood、uh, more deeply about uh, about uh, just animal and just life and but. Our, about our about our brain, one big step is about、uh, action potential. I think, yeah, yes, yes, that、sir. is uh, actually uh, I think twenty、uh, around nineteenth、uh, century. There is very famous scientist called Kahar, Ramon Ramoni Kahar. He、mm-hmm. he's Said there is some information direction in our neurons with action potential. So、mm. everybody r e c o g n i z e our brain is like computer. There's some inf- information flowing. Ones and zeros? No, no not one. And,、uh, well, actually, action potential is one and zero, it's just binary. Yes. So, But it's not, <laughs> we know that that's not that. <laughs> But anyway, after that, we don't have any big step. So that is a big problem about understanding our brain. But that's the thing. Every time you set a, a goal, like you set a, a like border,、yes. you understand that it's not that's enough. Never. It's <laughs> never <laughs> enough. It's never enough. You're right. <laughs> is that a beautiful?、Mm. Do you find that frustrating or exciting? Actually. Boss, <laughs> yeah. but now、mm, it, it's like icy hot. But now, yeah, yes, icy hot. <laughs>、mm, about me, my goal is there is some logic gate in brain or not, some, some kind of logic gate in、uh, its fundamental rules in brain or not. So maybe. I hope I can find something, but maybe I can't. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, you got some, you, you mean that you, you know what you're looking for, what you want to find,、yeah. but you haven't found, you, you know that it's in the brain. At least you know that it's in the brain.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, that, that's all in the end. Oh,、mm-hmm. uh, yes.、Uh, actually, our brain has、uh, many, m a m a has same, con-、uh, same. Uh, same construction, same pattern of brain. We have hippocampus, we have cortex, and the hippocampal、yeah. formation is, is just the same in whole mammal. So, probably there is some rules in, in, in our brain, I guess. So, maybe、mm. there is some basic.、Mm, More reason. <laughs> Yeah. Mm, mm, But unfortunately,、mm, mm. about my research, as I said, I'm,、uh, I'm, interested, I'm interested in very basic rules. But now, neuroscience goes to behavior experiments. So, unfortunately, my experiments, my research is not become popular. <laughs> It doesn't matter、really? if it's popular. What matters is that you know, we need to find out. We need to <laughs>、yeah. find out. Yes, that's true. Yes, because it's all in the head. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, with that, what do you think about video games? Wait, wait, hold up about that.、Yeah. I think we should just skip to the anime part. Okay, let's go with that because we have、oh, three hours、yeah. recording. <laughs> So let's go with anime. Would you like to give us the, the notes on these,、uh, Alan? Yeah, sure, no problem.、Um, let's read this.、Uh, so, Anime Corner、uh, release announcements. So, we have the first one for two different、uh, 
anime uh, adaptations from either light novels or manga of some sort and uh, they're a little spicy if you will um, and I believe Chibi was explaining how one of them will potentially be uh, have two versions one uh, naughty version or uh, yeah naughty version and the one that will be censored um, and then the other one doesn't have any uh visual or i guess uh animated visuals yet but it's in the works and mm-hmm. is also uh naughty in in the way that um the story depicts the one of the main characters or the heroine i guess where she has special uh powers of redoing uh a, a situation in life or something in in school uh with the power of her pantsu if you will <laughs> so <laughs> that that is uh that is quite a dilemma there um and the boy that helps her out do do uh the 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 redo if you will um and i believe the other one is i i want to say some some sort of uh harem uh, of some sort uh and go ahead and uh yeah those are those two the next one is from uh what's it called from otaku spirit and basically has something to do with uh news of ascendance of a bookworm returning has a released uh date i believe or adaptation for a part three and i i believe it's with studio that will be producing uh the this third installment of of um this anime the again of audio um ascendance of a bookworm so i don't know if any of you have seen this one i'm not sure how it what it would be called in japanese but um these two are the the bullet points here um i don't know if you have anything to add uh mr j or mr marcos when he gets back uh or if kenichi has heard of these uh adaptations i guess oh, could you please tell me the title of the japanese name you don't know oh of course let me let me try to um oh it's a long one, long one. <laughs> yeah i, I <laughs> can always <laughs> yeah this usually they are um let's uh see. oh wait here you okay. go here i'll share okay. my screen i have for a sentence of a bookworm right yeah hey right here good <laughs> what my man Kenichi said. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but from this title, I can't imagine any story about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, is this some kind of Battle, battle story. <laughs> I have, I have even watched it. I think, I think it's a, it's a sort of isekai. isekai I think okay. I'm not sure. Sh- maybe, maybe. I, I don't remember exactly, but I think that's what uh, it is. But my feeling, Urano, he loves books and has an endless desire to read literature, no matter the subject. She almost fulfills her dream job of becoming a librarian before her life is ended in an accident. Oh, okay. As she draws her last breath, she wishes to be able to read more books in her next life. Okay. As if faced with listening to her prayer, she wakes up reincarnated as mine, a frail five-year-old girl living in the mid- medieval era. What immediately comes to her mind is her passion. She tries to find something to read only to become frustrated by the lack of books at her disposal. Without the printing press, books have to be written and copied by hand, making them very expensive, as such if only a few nobles can afford them. But this won't stop mine. She will prove to her she she will prove that her will to read is unbreakable. If there are no books around, she'll make them herself. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so it is an isekai. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but she didn't get truckooned, so it's different. Exactly. <laughs> she got, well, she gets killed in an accident, but. <laughs> uh, okay. What's it called, bud? I was going to say, like, the, I, I picked up two more uh, animes okay. that are uh, coming out this or that are already out. Um, let me see if I can pull up the first one. Let me take out the. Okay. Huh. This one has a crazy long name, too. <laughs> um, so in English, okay. we call it uh, Shangri-La Frontier. OK. Um, so basically, oh. uh, the main character uh, loves playing okay. video games, especially the trashy games. As he calls OK, it. Oh, it's weak, so game um, means trash game. OK. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, he he's like he he wants to get the next the next uh the next game out because he just finished one okay. and the the person in the store is like oh, i recommend you this one this one's pretty popular mm -hmm. uh and it's called it's actually called shangri -La frontier and, okay uh i think it i think it's, it's actually called that because i heard when they said in japanese they said yes, shangri -La yes, frontier yeah. um so uh the main character is this is his avatar with the the bird okay. head um and it's just his adventures in Shangri-La Frontier. So if you like, like, I think this is a RPG type of game in, in the series. Oh, it, it Rex, like those type it's of Rex, games. It's uh, Rex. I can't remember. Uh, there's similar anime like that. Uh, uh, oh, like uh, yeah, Sword, Sword Art? Art. Yes, Sword Art. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think if you like Sword Art, yeah, you probably mm. like this one too. But this, I think this one... Like, as soon as I picked up these two, I, I was like, oh, there you go. There's the season hitters. <laughs> oh, so really? I was like, uh, yeah. No. Yeah, no, Shangri-La Frontier is really oh, good. Okay. I think it's like top two for this season. Well, how, how did you know that? <laughs> like, and not, not, uh, not including like the Jutsu Paisen. No, how, how did you know that? You read some original book or oh. something? No, no, no. I saw it at Crunchyroll. I was like, let me give it a shot. Hmm. Is the animation okay? Because it looks kind of weird because of the cover. It looks kind of. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, the fight scenes are pretty cool, and the uh, yeah, like stuff like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not too bad. Oh, okay. Right here. They got shading. Oh, oh yes. very nice. <laughs> Shout out. Um. But yeah, and then the next one. No, let me is he quick, uh, main character? Oh, yeah, okay. so his the, I forgot what his name. Let me see if I get a synopsis here. Uh yeah. <laughs> right put all it's already started. Utomi? Yeah, I already started. It's already uh oh, ten okay. episodes in. Is it top? No. Uh only cares about one thing, beating crappy VR games. He devotes his entire mm. life to these buggy games that could clear them all in his sleep. One day he decided to challenge himself and play a popular god tier game called Shangri-La Frontier. But he quickly learns just how difficult it is. Will his ex expert ex skills be enough to uncover its hidden secrets? So okay. yeah, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. So let me whip out this next one that I picked up. Sounds like you're grabbing books. No, exactly. No, 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 no. Uh, Ragnar's Crimson. Let me get the... It's probably a long one. Oh, okay. not that long. Uh, I think it's it's literally Ragnar Crimson. Yeah, you're right. It's the same. same. Okay. <laughs> Ragnar Crimson. Okay. Um, so let me actually get a synopsis on this one. Uh, synopsis, synopsis. I guess this is. Uh, in a world where dragon rules sky, sea, and land, uh, dragon hunter Ragnar joined forces with the mysterious Crimson to fight the dragons at any cost to sh and destroy the dragon monarchs. I guess that's so simple. It basically, so the main character is called Ragnar. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of interlapped with his current self and his future self. 
where his future self already lost someone that he really likes and he devoted his life into destroying these dragons um so when when the time came where he loses that person that he really likes um he has this like meeting with his future self and his future self is like you know i spent my entire life killing all these dragons uh, basically ending them but there's no point because i can't bring back the people i lost um so his current self is like just give me your powers and i'll protect them uh and eventually they were able to transfer the powers from his pat from his future self to his past self Whoa. and um yeah became becomes like ultra powerful and kills the first like dragon knight um i like uh yeah there's this scene with this this so this is a one of the dragons <laughs> uh she can like rewind time and there's a scene in it and i saw it a lot in like social like instagram and stuff where dragon. she rewinds time and is constantly uh being killed by the main character over and over <laughs> again <laughs> and like uh i like the i like the raid because he has like the raid. she tries everything to stop <laughs> him she even goes back before they met and that still didn't stop him he goes beyond <laughs> the time stop and still kills just kills her but she gets to rewind again um so is she is she dead or is she alive no nah, she's alive mm -hmm. she rewinded just in, just before her limit um but yeah he uh so this is a guy the red hair <laughs> oh, that's weird um but like he's supposed to be like another like dragon but his goal is also to kill all of the dragons so they team up this is not the main character this is someone else but um he teams up with the main character and uh, yeah he kind of, this is the main character oh. he has uh he has an up so in order to fight dragons in this world you have to craft weapons made of a material called silverin and he has trained so much with a certain sword that his body kind of absorbs silverin and now his blood and yeah basically his blood is silverin so he can manifest different weapons made of silverin um and create them from nothing he kind of reminds me a little bit like gilgamesh Love it. What's funny is that there's a girl that can kind of sense people's abilities and kind of pictures it in a different way. And she basically sees him as a sword. And I was like, oh, oh, no, I don't know if they have it here, but. Um, you probably don't. Oh, yeah. So this, this is her. No. This is the person that can see the abilities of different people. And I don't think... Yeah, here we go. This is how she looks at him. No. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like a sword. This is how she looks at him. Uh, but yeah, I think these two are uh, really good. Oh, with this started. Already started. This one already okay. started as well. I think it's also 10 episodes mm. in. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, my little update oh and i guess also this is more video game but let me just pull it up in the meantime oh wait i got it <laughs> i'm i'm doing the hot sauce check hot sauce um so they and so they we recently had the gamer awards which I think it might some categories might have been robbed, um, but in in the Game Awards they released the new uh, Budokai Tenkaichi installment uh, from Dragon Ball, and they're calling it Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, and they show clips. Of, oh, do they have the video? The video? Oh, they do. Oh, wow. Can you turn this down though. So the listener were looking at the trailer for the new Budokai Tenkaichi uh, Dragon Ball Z. Oh. 
Ok. <ride> I wonder what the story's about. Sparkling water. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Fine. But it's going to be a similar fighting style like Budokai Tenkaichi 3. <laughs> um, so, but it's like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm pre-ordering the game. <laughs> Very good. And it's done. It's done. <laughs> yeah, it's done. Uh, yeah. Just from this this visual alone is like, it's enough for me. <laughs> I, I really want it. He has receipts. Uh, unfortunately, they released this. But they don't tell us the release oh. date, so I don't know what's coming out. <laughs> actually, That's why I, it's wish list. Mm, I feel a very weird feeling <laughs> because just voice actor is not the same as Japanese voice actor. So, <laughs> of uh, yes, it just feels wrong. <laughs> I think uh, just just uh, visualizing and uh, hearing is not much. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. And I wonder if they have. Uh, do we have a Japanese? Meanwhile, like for us, it looks right and it sounds oh, right. Okay. So <laughs> I understand. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they might they might do a similar thing where they've been doing of uh, they'll have the voice act the voices for <laughs> Japanese. Sweet <laughs> happy, yeah. But in the in the English <laughs> games. <laughs> but to me, is like this. This is like this, I think this is really peak <laughs> right now. So okay. Uh, I can't wait till that game comes out and I'll be playing. Is that for, is that what is what kind of console? Okay. Oh, uh, it's gonna be on the PlayStation, PlayStation 5, 5, the Xbox Series X and S, and it's gonna okay. be on PC. PC, oh. you say? Oh, the board, you say? Mm. Yeah. Computer. Okay. Okay. But yeah, and with that, I think we should mm. call it. What do you think, Marcos? I do. Mm. Alan, sign us off if you will. All right. Thank you. And uh, once again, listeners, thank you so much for joining joining us this evening. I'd like to thank Marcos, Mr. J, and of course, our very special guest, Kenichi. Kenichi, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. I hope. Thank you. I hope uh, this was as enjoyable as it was for us making it for you, everyone. And uh, hopefully we'll be we will be back with you guys next time on our next episode of LTS podcast. Most likely um, it'll probably be either a, an out of office or uh, an Espanol uh, episode. So look forward to it. And um, again, uh, all our uh, profiles and other links will be in the show notes. Um, and do, do follow us on x instagram uh youtube spotify or or wherever you listen to your podcasts all right remember and, never leave your home without your songs oh definitely <laughs> <laughs> and uh guys would you like to say a word of of uh conclusion before we leave wash your hands <laughs> that is all <laughs> i guess basically <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, everyone. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much. Take care. Mm -hmm.